welcome to BizTech's Enterprise Technology Show. Hi, I'm Brian Fernandez, and with me today, we have Matthew Kaufman. He's the Vice President for North Asia and Korea at Verin Systems. Now founded in 1994 and headquartered in Melville, New York, Verint is a, a NASDAQ-listed company. Now to tell us more about this, welcome to the show, Matty. Thank you very much, Brian. Thanks for having me. It's a great opportunity to share with you and with the audience about Verint. So I, I've been working uh, with Verint for five and a half years now in Hong mm -hmm. Kong, uh, and I cover uh, Hong Kong, China, Taiwan, and Korea. Uh, I've been in Asia for more than 20 years, living in Singapore, uh, Tokyo, and Hong Kong, uh, covering, I think, all the markets in the region, so I can, can share about the, the different markets uh, as well. Verint started, Verint is the, what we call today the CX automation company. We started, as you said, 25 years ago as a recording company. So when you hear the message that your call is being recorded for compliance or for a, a quality a purpose, that's where we started. We were, one, I think, the pioneer around it. Over the years, we added additional solutions like quality management, a speech analytics based on speech to text, and workforce management, and expand into the digital side to omni-channel case management, agent desktop, and knowledge management, and other solutions. Uh, so we probably provide the biggest or the most robust uh, solutions in the contact center in the market. We serve mm -hmm. probably 10,000 customers, mainly FSI, manufacturing, government, uh, transportation, um, in more than 150 50 countries and uh, with 85% of the Fortune uh, 100. Now, what does your footprint look like in the Asia Pacific region? I w Can you repeat the question? Sorry, I couldn't hear it. Yeah, sure. What does your footprint look like in the Asia Pacific region? So I would say we have a good mix across all the countries from Australia, New Zealand to India, Southeast Asia, eh, China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Korea, eh, and Japan. A, there's a big, uh, I think, historically, we work a lot with the FSI, mm -hmm. uh, all the many of the major bank and in, insurance, as well as uh, government and transportation and, and manufacturers uh, in the region. Okay, could you then, and, and again, um, because you mentioned you, you are very strong in the FSI space in particular, could you share some customer stories of how you really help customers? Definitely. And, and let me start by explaining what is the, the challenge that we're trying to address and how we address it today sure. with those examples. So we're looking on what happened in the market in, in the last uh, few years, and we identify what we call uh, the engagement capacity gap. If you think about you know, the timeline, we'll have one uh, horizontal vector, which is very flat, it's actually your budget and your resource. Mm -hmm. They're not growing. Usually they're actually declining. Uh, there's another vector that starts horizontal and goes up to the sky and that's the customer expectation today. So we see a combination of a, an elevated customer experience that we are as consumer expects to have. And also the amount of interaction. In the past, you can only use the phone to, con to contact the brand. Now you can use the phone, the email, the WeChat, the WhatsApp, the, uh, the website, all kinds of what we call the omni-channel. Now, over time, it creates a gap for the organization to handle. The way we found that you can uh, close this gap is by bringing the CX automation. And the way we offer customer now to do it is by using uh, the AI-based based bot. And, and I'll give you a few examples. Uh, if you look about uh, customers that uh, uh, having a, an average handling time of a call for five, five, six minutes and a wrap up time of three, four minutes, a lot of the FSI will have this kind of statistics. Uh, mm -hmm. We're offering them a wrap up uh, a agent, a wrap up bot, I'm sorry. Um, uh, we have a, a global customer that tested without uh, less than a year from now. Uh, before less than a year, uh, about it started with 300 agents using the Rappa bot. They found out they can save 
around 30 seconds per call when they have to write the call summary as a uh, post uh, processing of the call. And now they roll out with 30,000 uh, agents to use this and they expect uh, millions of dollars of saving um, uh, as a result of this. That's it's a phenomenal a, saving in terms of, because when you start to think of the first 30 second saving, multiply yeah. by the agents, multiply exactly. by the cost of it, basically, in a nutshell, that project pretty much paid for itself very quickly. Uh, pretty much, yes. And uh, 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 we see a lot of interest in the wrap up, but one of the reasons is a very strong ROI and it's immediate. In our case, uh, we have an offer to customers said 30, 60, 90s. So we'll get it up and running in 30 days. You're going to see the payback in 60 days. We're confident about it. If you don't like it in 90 days, you can stop. This is wow. how confidence we have. That's a very that's a very strong ROI and yeah. a very quick implementation. What is the and and and, and this is interesting. Um, again, given my background from enterprise tech, how do you implement in thirty days? So that's a very good question. I would say it's more than this. How do you get your AI ready now? Because if you look on the market, there's a lot of AI ingested into the market. A lot of solution. Verant came with, with what we call the Open CCAS. It's a platform. And this platform can deliver AI business outcome now. So we do use AI, but AI is not the, it's not the goal. And I hear too many times that people say we must use AI. And the question is, why do you use AI? For what purpose? What is the outcome that you want to measure that will justify the cost that you're spending? And, and I'll show you the ROI. So, and you want it now. If you look on a project, some cases we see internal team uh, running a project, they can take the month, probably half a year plus to get something like this running, which means that the ROI is delayed in half a year, you're actually losing money if you're not starting now. Uh, the open CCAS platform is actually based on, on three requirements or three things that, that we offer. One of them, it has to be open in all the dimensions, has to be flexible. Okay. So I can leverage existing telephony that you have or CRM that you have or a chatbot that you already implemented or your own LLM. It's not a rip, rip and replace. I'm not forcing you to move to a new technology. It's also saving okay. you time. It's modular, so I can start any point I want. Uh, one of the advantage we have now with existing customer base, which are on-prem, they don't have to move the whole contact center to the cloud, which will take them a lot of time. They can actually bring AI-based cloud solution to ingest into their uh, existing contact center. That's, and, oh, uh, that's interesting. That that's really from an. I'm just thinking, and you can see me thinking from my from my face, really around. And that's the time saving around implementation. It, the time saving around implementation is huge, and and part of it is because, and and I'll go to the 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 second the second element of this platform is that you need to have to support many AI powered bots. There's no one size fits all. It's not AI technology that we provide the customer, so they have to train it with their own data. We have a lot of data, and we train the the bots on this data. Now bots could be different. The bot that do wrap up. Is different than the bot that will do a call transfer. Is different than a bot that actually helps the organization optimize the scheduling of the shift for the employees. And each one of them may have a different AI as a technology behind it. But because we can provide those, uh, I would say, more than 40 age, uh, bots, and because we can, we, we support a, a comprehensive data hub, which is the core in our, our system. That, that allow us to, to generate the information and the, you can say the customer journey from the voice, from any omni-channel into one place and normalize it, we can tune the, the bots uh, before you even start to use them. So when we make an offer to the customer, it's a matter of weeks to get the system up and running and it's, you, you'll start to see the bot working on the spot. You don't have to train them. You probably have to tune them, but you don't have to train them to know how to do wrap-ups or call transfer or other activities. Okay, that, wow, that's okay. So that makes sense then in terms of your 30, 60, 90 perspective. Definitely. 
makes yes. complete sense. Now, yes. I want to take a, a zoom out a little bit, and I want you to perhaps share with us some insights that you have from a global perspective. Now, Verint has recently done some research on the state of digital CX in 2024. Yes. Tell us about some key findings and, and what we can, some key takeaways that we can take out of this. Yeah, that, that was a very interesting report. For the first time in our history of variant reports, we see, you know, the shift to digital is happening. So 72% of the user already tried to use digital in engagement. Okay. And we see that 61% prefer the digital, while 39 still prefer opting with uh, the phone. So the phone is declining. And the, you can say the digital, the omnichannel is, is on the rise. Um, but don't let, let it, and, and some people get confused about it. The fact that the phone calls or the, the prefer to use a phone declining, it doesn't mean that your phone calls are not important. On the, on the opposite, right now, if a person used to choose to use a digital interaction and it fails, which means it has to move to a phone call, the phone call is more critical, it's more important, something did not work well, it could be probably a complaint, it would be more complex. So we actually have to know how to address it better now than before. What we was very interesting to find is, is what is the most important aspect of good customer experience? And 87% look on the quick response. So okay. consumer and me as well, I want a quick answer. Quick reply, quick interaction. Yeah. The second thing, I want you to resolve my problem. So I want to connect. I want to get in a, a, a quick interaction with somebody, whether it's a bot or a human, and I want this, the, the problem to be resolved quickly. I don't want to have an ongoing interaction and discussion and follow-up calls and explain myself again and again. And that's a fundamental, isn't it? I exactly. mean, that's never changed. I want it fast. I want it resolved. Absolutely. Um, the next, I would say the next, the third in line of what's uh, important for people to and define the, the aspect of good customer experience, I want to contact my way. I may use the phone, I may send you a message, I may send you an email. I want to decide. The power is with the, the user. And one of the most interesting thing is, is, is the, we ask people, what would you do if you, you had a, a terrible customer experience. So 70% said they will switch the brand. And 65% said they will also tell it to their family and friends. On the other hand, when we ask, what will be your reaction following an amazing customer experience? 85% said they will purchase again, and 75% said they will recommend it to their friends. So you can see the risk and reward with the customer experience. And, and one of the important, I think, outcome of, of this thing, especially for executive, is the understanding that the customer experience become very important. I don't know if as important as the product itself, but not far from it. That's the way we as a consumer look on a solution. It's not just the product you're selling me, it's the whole experience. And a lot of it is the customer engagement that we're having. And if you look on how do we, how do people define a, a terrible a customer engagement? So the one thing that strike out is, is multiple attempt to, to, to get a simple answer. Nobody likes to have follow-up calls and, and to repeat again about the problems and to spend time with the chatbot just to find out, I have to talk with an agent that will ask the same question all over again. Yes. And we'll have an escalation to someone else that we call me in another day, maybe not in the hour I want, just to ask me again all the same questions. So that's, that's the type of experience we don't want to see anymore. And I would say another, another element that, that uh, go back to the you know, AI infused bots that we have, we looked on a, a customer uh, feedback on on, um, on bots on self service and we look on the chatbot. Close to seventy percent had bad experience with the chatbot, and the bad experience is mainly defined with chatbot that cannot answer, mm -hmm. and chatbot that don't understand what I want. And it goes to the same point. I want a, a quick interaction and I want it to be resolved. Um, 
And that goes back, I think, we've seen it both with AI and with the platform with, with, which we talked about. Um, the AI help us tremendously. The, the uh, Gen AI helps tremendously because we move from conversational, from Q&A, from question and answer, which if you change a little bit, the bot may not be able to answer. Now it's cognitive. It's in, about intense. It's a human yes. style. It's the same as the, our conversation. Exactly. And, but the other element goes back to what I described as the, the data hub. It's the silos that we have in organization. When you implement a chatbot by itself, the interaction is not related to the customer history. I may have called you before. I may have sent email. I may be a VIP customer. There's a history you have to understand about the customer you're interacting with. The other thing is how do I train or how do I manage this uh, bot? If I uh, spend time with supervisor uh, and define KPIs for my agent and train them over time on new things, and I neglect the bot, the chatbot, which happened in a lot of organization, obviously this bot will not be relevant. Think about uh, before COVID, you know, chatbot mm -hmm. would say one thing. During COVID, you will say another thing. After COVID, you should say an, a different thing. Yes. How fast the organization actually updated. And this is where AI comes in. Definitely. And, and the, the AI give you this uh, a much easier intent-based conversation that makes it much more friendly for us. So I think today you start to see more and more organization going back and invest in, in a chatbot, but uh, much more friendly and much more updated and relevant for the organization. We look on containment. We have an example of customer that use a, a containment bot and being able to reduce, to contain, you can say 67% of the interaction that they have which means whether you call them or uh, use a digital interaction, it will never go beyond this first uh, a response to a human agent. They managed to drop down tremendously the amount of calls they're having just by having a good containment capability. Interesting. Now, Freddie, can I ask you this, which is so important, you've presented this information, you've got these key findings. What are some key trends that you see that uh, in your industry, in this space, in the CX space, in the, the, the customer engagement sector in 2024, 2025, and how is Varian's future plans for innovation and growth to basically solve these issues and take advantage of these opportunities? So if I look on, on discussion I have, and uh, I meet a lot of executives, and mm -hmm. I always ask them, what's, you know, what is on your mind? What's important for you? What are your KPIs or what you define as the KPI? And uh, everybody talking about elevate the CX experience. They want to be the number one in their, in their area or one of the top uh, 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 solution. And they recognize that the CX experience as, is as important as the solution they are selling. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing which is obvious is operation uh, efficiency because we're not spending more money, we have the same resources or even less. Uh, and another uh, interesting area is the investment we do, not just with the experienced customer have, but also with the experience that our own agent have. And that's related to attrition rates. And mm. I've seen uh, numerous times when I talk with organization, attrition rate between 15 to 20%. Now, just to put it in perspective, if you have a contact center of 500 people, and your attrition rate is 20%, and I've talked with organizations that have this type of attrition rate. It means that in the next 24 months, you have to hire 200 people. Yes. Which is a big task today in the market. You have to train them. You have to get them up and running. There's a lot of cost involved. And you have to make sure you don't burn them. So you have to keep, uh, find ways to make the work for them more, uh, you know, more uh, easier, uh, more enjoyable, more uh, uh, over time, and uh, being able to be more effective. And and we talk about a wrap up bot, for example. That's something that can take away from the agent the whole requirements to write down on the on the summary of the call. Yeah, which is great. Uh, it could be a transfer bot that will take a conversation that I had, which has to be escalated, and will provide all the, the, the information related to the summary of the call, to the history of the customer where they had previous complaints, 
uh, and to other elements that I don't have to type by myself. That can save a lot of time. Uh, one of the great things we, we release, uh, uh, we provide in, in the last year is a solution called FlexTime. And the problem is, is resolving relating to scheduling a shift. So we have an organization, an insurance company, uh, that have a couple of hundred of agents. Mm -hmm. Those couple of hundred of agents produce a couple of thousands of change requests per week to change their shift. Now, there's no way a supervisor can handle it because there's not enough supervisor in the organization. For myself, when I try to arrange 10 people in the office to go for dinner, I don't know how many emails and how much time I have to spend around it. So yes. what, what happened with employees, uh, they either stop asking and they're not happy. And the other thing, if they have to do something, they will be absent. They will take leave. So we see absentees mm -hmm. and we see attrition rates that are going up because employees are not happy. And, you know, we, we like to talk about net N NPS and how we see NPS go up. We've seen a customer going from 3 to 39% just by being able to uh, analyze the call that they have in real time better and, and arm the agent with relevant information. But it's also related to the agent itself. Mm -hmm. So by being able to provide them the flexibility to change shift, and align it with the target of the organization. You just you can't just change whatever you want. I, I will give you the offer that are related to the shift that the organization uh, value more, which related to a more uh, you know peak time. Uh, we've seen the uh, attrition rate goes down in five to ten percent. So if you can go down from the twenty percent to uh, ten percent or five percent, it means you don't have to hire this amount of people, and that's a huge savings mm -hmm. that an organ organization can see. And we also start to see a lot of the hype. Everybody tried AI. And I think a lot of the solution of the market over promise and underperform over mm -hmm. time. And now organizations start to see a, or start to evaluate a, which solution are working and, and understand the importance of moving now and use an AI solution that have outcomes immediately. So okay. I think, sorry, please. No, no, go ahead, please. So I think that uh, if you look on, on a, a this year and next year, uh, we definitely see more and more customer adopting the OpenCCAS platform mm -hmm. and leveraging it to use the, the, the AI that we provide. There's a, a variety of AI bots that we have. We see a lot of the, our on-premises customer uh, adding those uh, cloud-based AI solution uh, into their uh, environment, and uh, we expect this trend to grow more and more. Now, Matty, it's been a fascinating conversation, but I, I've got to ask you this. If I'm a CIO of a bank, why should I pick Verint instead of some of the, the, the pl a plethora of vendors out there that offer similar solutions? So um, I, I would say there's there's a few elements here that uh, may differentiate us. First of all, is our experience. We're a customer engagement company for a uh, 25 plus year. You can say we're a, a, today we're a startup mode that have a 25 years of experience in this business. <laughs> Every time I sit with my team in the room, there is more than a hundred years of experience in the room about contact center, and that's important. We understand this market very well. The other thing, and, and I think we see more and more around it, and that's related to what I shared about 39, uh, 60, 90, we can offer you AI outcomes now. It's not about AI as a target. It's not about using AI. It's about identifying the, the KPIs that you have and provide you out of the variety of the different bots that we have, the one that can help you with the, the CX elements that you need in order to resolve it now. And, and we've seen it, and I think we went through it with the example we have, whether it's the wrap -up bot or a coaching bot or the a time flex bot that, that show customer result from really after a few weeks that they implemented it. Patty, thank you very much for taking your time to be on the show. It's been very educational. Thank you very much for the time and thank you for having me. Now, we've been speaking to Matty Kaufman. He's the Vice President for North Asia and Korea at Verin Systems.
I'm Brian Fernandez, and you've been watching and listening to the Enterprise Technology Show. This interview will be on our website, www.biztech.asia, as well as our syndication partners, TV stations, radio stations, and websites. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Thank you.